Hello, beautiful soul family. Rebecca here, your vibe mentor, bringing you another video on how to raise your vibration so you can live your best life. Let's talk Monday magic, intuitive energy reading today. I'm so, so excited. But before we do, I just want to remind you guys, we are opening the doors on 1111 to the new earth construction team community. This is so exciting. I cannot tell you how excited I am. I dream about this. This is amazing. And I am so honored and blessed to be gifted the opportunity to open this community, create a safe place for healing any of your blocks or wounds that are holding you back from your purpose so that you can manifest abundance through it and assist in creating the new earth. And I am beyond excited. Obviously, I cannot find enough words to articulate how amazing it is going to be to bring together the community and to hold that safe space for flourishing and, and thriving individuals who are going to make massive impacts in the world. So if you want to be part of the team, come join us, drop a note below, or send me an email and say, hey, I want in. I want to reserve my founding member price that you will be grandfathered in at for life. And no matter when or how much I raise the price or the price gets raised by the divine, you will be grandfathered in at that original founding member price if you join us before 1111. All right, so today, Monday Magic Intuitive Energy reading. If you're new here, welcome. I do my own read on the energy, and sometimes that might be where you're at, and sometimes it might not be. And oftentimes, uh, I don't want to say oftentimes, it is not uncommon for it to precede what is coming, that there are multiple people in our community who have mentioned to me, hey, you know, you're usually a couple days ahead of me, but I, it's nice to know it's coming. So if it resonates, great. If it doesn't, don't shoot the messenger. Again, this is my read on the current energies. And so we are in the thick of it. <laughs> Today is November 7th. We have an eclipse on November 8th. I'm not sure of the exact time. So depending on where you are in the world, that date may change, but it's within the ballpark. Um, we have the eclipse conjunct Uranus, which is the planet of sudden changes. Apparently we've got a lot of dust or fairies floating around in the air today. I'm not sure what's up with that, but we're rolling with it. Um, yeah, so to to have the moon conjunct Uranus is very interesting because it is the planet of sudden changes and surprises, which makes it very, very difficult for astrologers to um, anticipate what might be coming. So we've got the sun in Scorpio opposite, which gives us a full moon in Taurus. Um, the moon in Taurus is conjunct Uranus. And then they are also aspecting Saturn. We also have Mercury and Venus conjunct the sun in Scorpio. So lots and lots of activity. Then you add to that, there's also um, an aspect between Jupiter and Neptune, which can really expand either the delusion or the dreams. And so this, this is a, a, a very interesting energy. It's very activated. It can be very intense. Um, and it is uncertain. It's really unclear how this will go. So what I do know is when we are in eclipse season, it can feel like we've got our finger stuck in a socket. There are certainly a lot of people out there who are feeling a lot of frustration, a lot of anger, a lot of anxiety, a lot of uncertainty. Um, I've seen a lot of road rage in the last couple of days. Just people are, you know, they're sort of at their wits end. Um, with Mars retrograde, there is of course um, and I believe Mars may be aspecting, is aspecting one of those. I think it might be the, the Jupiter, Neptune. I for, forget exactly, um, but check that one out if you're interested. But certainly um, aggression and anger is is part of um, what is being served up right now. So it's, it's um, always fun how these uh, readings come through as I sit down and meditate on what am I currently sensing and what are the messages that the divine wants to deliver? Because when I ask for what's the energy, I always get how to deal with the energy. And so it's, it's, it's fascinating um, that there's support. There's always support in this. And today, as much as ever, it has been very clear that there are two paths. And I think in, in life in general, at any moment, there's always a choice point where we can choose to allow ourselves to sink into or to get wrapped up in the, the aggression, the frustration, the uncertainty, the pressure, the pressure of what this type of environment can create can be very, very difficult. It can be sort of heavy. It can feel like we're being crushed by the weight of whatever is shifting and changing. And the, the choice is to choose to see that that is optional. 
that the delusion of the mind, the maya that is created through the beliefs is a choice. And so the first recommendation that came through very, very strongly, it's reiterating what was said last week, five different ways is grounding, 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 grounding. And in fact, the message was just more grounding. So we need to, to really plant our feet on the ground as it came through last week. It was not just enough to you know, meditate and envision that we're putting roots into the earth, but we really need to put our feet on the dirt. Um, and that was very clear. So the other awesome <laughs> insight that came through was we are on the home stretch that once we get past this eclipse season, um, typically you'll feel the intensity of a full moon three days before, three days after eclipse season can and um, sort of stretch out that intensity between the two eclipses. If there's three, it would of course go between the three. Um, but I do find that it can take a little bit longer for the intensity to um, settled down after the eclipse passes. So we're looking at at least another week or so after the full moon before we really start to feel the lifting and the lightness that is coming. That when the the statement, the this is the home stretch came through, I, I kind of had the question of, well, we've we've heard this before. It's always just around the corner, right? And and it was, you know, clarified that this is the home stretch of this intensity of, of energy right now. That really Good things are around the corner. They always have been. They always will be. Um, but the fun is about to begin. Is is the um, the insight <laughs> that came through? Um, deepening of connection. So there is there is again that opportunity if we can step out of the intensity, step out of the frustration, and and really all of the intensity and the frustration and the anger comes from the resistance to what is. When we get attached to an outcome, we have an expectation of how things should go and then it doesn't go our way or it doesn't happen as quickly or someone else, you know, seemingly causes a problem for us, then that creates that we're in resistance to it. That creates that discomfort. And so when we step out of that, when we choose to rest in the flow, rest in surrender, rest in allowing and trust there is a deepening of connection that is available to us right now. It's a, it's a remembering of your divinity, a remembering that we are all one, not just that we are connected, but rather we are literally part of the divine, part of our creator. Our creator is everything. It's, it's one thing to say it's in everything, but it literally is everything. It is the breath of life. It is life itself. We are an aspect of the divine. And so if we are an aspect of the divine, that means we are infinitely abundant. We are infinitely resourced. We are infinitely supported. We are infinitely cared for. That there can be no lack unless we believe it to be so, that we are the creator in a sense. And so the remembering of, it's very interesting why all of these things are dancing around and I'm barely even moving. <laughs> Take that for what it's worth. Um, the remembering of who we are allows us to rest in that peace, to find the eye of the storm, to be still in the eye of the storm as all of this chaos moves and dances around us. We don't have to be swept up in those waves. We don't have to be rocked and tossed about and thrown about in the waves of the emotions of the collective when we can remember and deepen that connection. Remember our true self. Our true self is the are the things that cannot be taken away, the things that will not fade, the thing that will last forever and ever is our consciousness, is our awareness, is our being an aspect or fractal of the divine. And in that wholeness, completeness, peace, happiness, everything we seek. We can also shift our perspective around life. If life is the divine, everything that is happening is part of the divine. It is divinely orchestrated. Then it's perfect. And life is our guru. Life is our teacher. 
and we can start to shift our perspective and look for the lesson. Lesson sounds like a difficult word, right? Look for the gift in what is happening. Observe it, detach from the outcome, see it from a neutral place. That every ounce of creation is created through a desire to experience by the divine. So it's perfect. And we are not in a place to judge or control or shift or change in any way. That we can start to see that there is beauty in everything, always, all around us, all the time, even in these, what could be called challenging moments. Now I'm, I'm careful to say it that way because the energy I'm experiencing my daily life, my current state of being right now is blissful. <laughs> it's amazing. It's awesome. But I recognize that that is not the only energy available. And I had to be careful in my requesting of the current energy to offer this reading, because if I only deliver what I'm experiencing, there's going to be a lot of you that say, I am not experiencing that. And I recognize it's because it's the choice. And when we put down the resistance, when we trust the perfection, we know I am being lived by life. I am being lived by my creator. And so how can it not be perfect? How can it not be beautiful? I don't have to do anything other than follow the guidance and know that I'm cared for. So let go of the illusion. Let go of the maya. Let go of the distorted thinking. Let go of the resistance. Know that it is not only happening for you, but it is happening through you. There's this saying, I believe Tony Robbins says, life is not happening to you, it's happening for you. Yes, and the guidance took that one step farther and said, not only is it happening for you, it is happening through you. That there is this dance, and I will do another video um, someone asked the question, you know, does manifestation conflict with the law of one, the oneness that we are, the, 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 the need for surrender and trust in the divinely orchestrated life that is living us that we have little to no control over? How does that conflict with manifestation? And I will do a separate video on that. There is still an element of free will in that you can choose your distortion. You can choose Maya, you can choose the illusion. You can choose the thoughts of separation, lack, attachment, control. But I use my free will to say, I know it doesn't work. Thank you. No, thank you. I'm done. I'm going to use my energy just to commune with the divine and trust that everything's going to happen anyways, just as it should. And that when it's necessary, I'll be guided this is not about inertia, but it is about surrender. Put down the addiction to being a fixer. Put down the addiction to control. Put down the addiction to the egoic mind that believes it's separate or somehow can manipulate what is, because that is the illusion. Put down control, put down resistance, because things are about to get really good if you let it. And again, that's where the free will to put down the distorted thinking comes in. Ask yourself the question, can you believe? Can you believe that really good things are literally happening in the next weeks and months, not just around the corner infinitely? But things are about to get really good. Now, here's the crazy part. Good things can be coming to you and you can still not let them in by clinging to the distorted thinking. That it literally could be dancing all around you, trying to smack you in the face, going, I'm here, I'm here, let me in. And you can still choose to believe. I've not accomplished enough yet. I'm not enough yet. I didn't earn that. 
It's too good to be true. I can't afford that. A perfect example of this, a perfect example of this is I've taken on a lot being a single mother, having the kids 95% of the time. Um, you know, obviously they come home at 2.30. I work at home. So there's the childcare while working, while building a business, while creating a new earth construction team. And also I decided that that wasn't enough. I'm going to go pursue a master's in psychology. Things had to shift. I couldn't do it all. It is impossible to keep the house clean and take care of the dog and feed the kids and take them to sports and do all these things. Now, I could have freaked out. I could have said, I can't, I can't. I don't have enough time. I don't have the bandwidth. I can't do that. But I knew that my guidance was very clear. Every time I sit down to work on this master's program, it feels so good and it feels so right, just as the business does, just as the new earth construction team community does. So I said, fine, I'll do it. But you got to show me how. Then the opportunity came along for a house cleaner, maybe even doggy daycare, maybe even still also having time to go for a forest bath with my friend on the weekend. The guidance was also very clear. You need play dates, which I thought it was funny. I had to use that language. I could choose to believe I don't have the time. I don't have the bandwidth. I don't have the energy. I don't have the money, blah, 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 right? All the money's got to go back into the business. I could shut out all of those assets and resources that are being offered to me because I choose not to believe. That is a choice. And that is the example of the choice. So my choice is I accept all support. Thank you. Okay. So can you rest in the knowing that it is safe to allow it? So there's a couple keywords here. One, rest. Stop resisting. Stop wrestling with it. Let it in. Know that it has been brought to you or offered to you because it's part of the divine plan. But you don't have to control things. You don't have to worry about things. In fact, worry attaches you to the issue. The surrendering of the worry separates you from the issue and allows the support or the healing or whatever is necessary to come in. And then the last key word there was allow it. Can you rest in the knowing so that you can allow it? Detach from the outcome because you are not the doer. You're not the fixer. You're not the doer. There's no need for control. There's no need for attachment. There's no separation between you and the divine. You are infinitely abundant, in infinitely supported, infinitely loved. And just as the birds are, are taken care of, they don't search for water or food, neither do the trees. How much more loved are you? Peace and happiness come not from doing, but allowing. And this is the, the uh, removing of the program that we need to do. This is the surrendering of what we've been taught, the programs of the mind that have told us we have to earn our worth. We have to earn a vacation. We have to earn abundance. But that's not true. You are not the doer. The divine is the doer, doing through you. So our job is to allow, to get out of the way, as they say, remove the distorted thinking. The beauty is we get to do less, not more. There is a tension, and there is a pressure, and there is anger and frustration available to you out there. If you're feeling that, Know that life is your guru and the opportunity to put down the distorted thinking and the resistance and the control is available to you. Now, if that feels like I know what I'm supposed to do, but I can't quite do it, then you're likely dealing with the trauma brain 
who tends to override the intelligent brain that feels that need for control that has convinced you through the ego that you are separate and lacking and that it's not safe. I do something called brain spotting. If you need assistance with that, we can heal it. It does not need to be a life sentence. If you have tried and cannot seem to get yourself to do the things you know you should, that is literally the battle of the prefrontal cortex versus the limbic brain. We just need to do some trauma healing and releasing to reprogram that, okay? Resistance is at an all-time high. So know that you're not alone. Don't beat yourself up. No amount of self-flatulation is ever going to be helpful. It will not accomplish anything. Just reach out for help. Be part of this community. Connect with the people in this community through our new Earth Construction team opening on 11.11, right? You can choose to sink into the flow. It is a choice that there is flow available to you. It's literally, I love the, the children's song, row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. It's If you're feeling resistance, if you're feeling tension, if you're feeling discomfort, it's because you're trying to row upstream. It is as simple as literally putting your oars in the boat and just letting the stream carry you. Now, I know that's oversimplified, and I've spent many, many years in my spiritual path cultivating these knowings, but it is possible. The fear of the uncertainty, the fear of not being in control, the fear of life getting out of control or running away with you is resolved through trust and surrender to the divine. Knowing that if your creator can create all of this, the heavens and the earth and you and everything here in it, can it not create the solution to every single one of your problems? You are cared for. The universe will catch you. It is safe to let go. It's about to get good. I love you, my friends, and I will see you on the next video. Namaste. Have a good week.